But what if you don't pull it off? They rise. Who does? What's beneath us? The ancient ones. The gods that used to rule the earth. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we'll be exploring the ancient ones featured in the excellent horror comedy The Cabin in the Woods. Directed by Drew Goddard in his directorial debut, the film stars Kristen Connolly, Chris Hemsworth, Anna Hutchinson, Francis Kranz, Sigourney Weaver, and the hilarious duo Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford. While the plot of the film follows a typical teen horror formula, with a bunch of college students that are terrorised in a remote cabin by supernatural forces, the film is actually a clever meta-commentary on our bloodthirsty fascination and obsession with seeing teenagers that embody classical archetypes die in film, as seen with the success of films like Halloween, Friday the 13th, The Evil Dead series, and Cabin Fever among many more. Referenced throughout the film, but only seen briefly, the Ancient Ones were enormous lava-like humanoid gods that lived beneath the surface of the Earth, inspired by H.P. Lovecraft's pantheon of cosmic entities known as the Great Old Ones. At the same time, I couldn't help but notice their similarity to the titans of Greek mythology, especially Kronos, who bears a great resemblance to the gods seen rising from the Earth at the end of the film. Despite being dormant for much of their existence, these sentient and powerful beings were essentially the source of power that controlled every monster that has ever been seen in the entire world. And though it's not explicitly stated, I think it's safe to assume that they were also responsible for their creation, with the creatures serving as vessels for their ultimate goal of seeing human sacrifices. For me, these Ancient Ones were a representation of the audience, who, with their purchasing power, have dictated the type of creatures they would like to see, and the manner in which they hunted their prey across various subgenres of horror films for our entertainment. Does it really matter if we see We're her? not the only ones watching, Ken. Gotta keep the customer satisfied. It's understood that the Ancients used to live above ground, ruling the primordial Earth during the Precambrian era some 4.6 billion years ago, and using their immense power to spill the blood of ancient creatures for their entertainment, up until the emergence of the Homo habilis. Seeing the Homo habilis as their plaything, and with the eventual development of the more intelligent Homo geogeorgicus, Ergaster, and Erectus, the Ancient Ones began tormenting the latter, causing the forefathers of humanity to worship them as gods, and forcing them to set up ritualistic sacrifices to appease them. In the film, one of the ritual supervisors explained that the sacrifice used to be as simple as throwing people into a volcano, but as time went on, the desire to see more entertaining means of sacrifice grew within the Ancient Ones, who then began changing the rules of the ritual to include five character archetypes, including the Virgin, the Athlete, the Whore, the Fool, and the Scholar. These characters would have to be forced into situations where they would be ceremoniously slaughtered by creatures and monsters. And should humankind refuse to satiate the Ancient One's desire to see these events play out, all of humanity risked extermination via the wrath of the gods who would once again rise onto the surface. To ensure that their punishment was somewhat justified, the teens needed to transgress and commit certain sins. While the bait is laid out for them, they themselves had to open Pandora's box. Lore. Supplemus. Carl. Dolor, Igneo, Animus. Within some point in modern history, presumably around the early 20th century, coinciding with the writings of Lovecraft himself, the organization was assembled due to the need for an ordered and more structured means of carrying out the rituals to satiate the gods. This involved the setting up of facilities around the world to perform the rituals, and the appointment of a facility director as the communicational link between the Ancient Ones and mankind. These facilities across the globe were the organization's way of increasing their chances of carrying out a successful ritual. At the start of the film, we're informed that the Swedish organization had failed, with only Japan and the United States left as humanity's last hope. But due to Japan's perfect record of carrying out the sacrifice without any problems, and with the US coming in as a close second, the station chiefs received this dire news with a sense of complacency. This, I think, is also a nod to the success of Japanese horror films that have inspired a litany of remakes of their films and horror concepts across the globe, especially in the US. Unfortunately for the world, the students involved in the Japanese ritual overcome their menacing spirit, sending the American facility into a frenzy. As mentioned earlier, every nightmarish and bloodthirsty monster was a manifestation of the Ancient One's desires for the punishment of humanity, and as a result of this, they were all under the control of the gods. While the first few teens died according to plan, both Marty and Dana, who were the Fool and the Virgin Archetypes, were able to let the creatures out of their containers by accessing the system's purge protocol, leading to the downfall of the facility and all of its staff. While this emergency procedure was created to be enacted in the event that the ritual didn't go to plan, further increasing the chances that the teens would be slaughtered, this failsafe had no safeguards of its own, and both the staff and security teams were unable to deal with the release of so many of the monsters at the same time. 
By the end of the film, Marty and Dana escape the chaos of the Purge and meet the director of the organization near the Pit of the Ancient Ones, where she explained that they needed to abide by the ritual for the safety of the entire human species. After asking Dana to shoot Marty, which she momentarily considers, the director is attacked by a zombie, causing her to fall into the pit. And just as the organization had expected, an ancient one suddenly arises from the pit, crushing both the survivors and the entire facility in the process, indicating that the world was about to come to an end. Written by Josh Whedon and Drew Goddard, the entire film is not only a meta-commentary on the audiences of horror films, but it's also a critique of horror film tropes, conventions, and cliches. Through the trajectory of the narrative, the film highlights how, just like the ancient ones, horror film fans now find primal fears tiresome and are constantly begging for more elaborate experiences in the genre. That's not fair, I had zombies too. Yes you did, yes you had zombies. But this is zombie redneck torture family, see? They're entirely separate species. It's like the difference between an elephant and an elephant seal. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the ancient ones featured in the cabin in the woods. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, shit.